Welcome back to the Costy Crab. In this video, I'm going to talk about how if I had zero programming knowledge and it was a life or death situation and I had to make a hundred thousand dollars USD a year from scratch, how I would speed run the entire process. And when I say speed run, I mean it is going to be a speed run because you are going to cut corners, you are going to skip steps, you are not going to learn things that the average developer that is working a job that you might be working would know. But the whole point is how to get yourself into that situation and then you can figure out most of the other stuff while you're in that situation. Um, it's going to bar you off from a lot of different opportunities, like maybe getting a job at a fang company. But this is how I would speed run to a $100,000 USD a year as a developer starting from scratch. And if you find value, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. So the first thing we're going to look at is the idea of where to start. Now, being someone that has absolutely no knowledge of programming, the first First thing I'm naturally going to Google is the easiest coding language to learn. I'm not really too concerned with anything about something that allows me to jump in really fast and learn. And as you can see here, the first two languages are HTML and JavaScript. Knowing nothing about HTML and JavaScript and just reading the quick descriptions, we can see that they sort of go hand in hand and they can actually work a bit together. So the second thing I'm going to look for is what you can use HTML and JavaScript for. And with just a couple Google searches, it's easy to see that pretty much both of them can be used together for something called front end development. And front end development basically is just the development of everything that the user sees on a web page. It's a form of web development, which you can get just from a quick Google search. Now that I know where I want to focus, I'm going to find the best thing to actually learn from front end development. And while I actually Google, you know, the best JavaScript frameworks to learn and use in 2022, which brings me to this random article, which by the way, the links to everything will be down in the description below. I'm going to find that the top 10 JavaScript frameworks, the top two are pretty much either uh, AngularJS or ReactJS. So just to make sure I'm fair, I'm going to go ahead and compare the two. I'm going to look at some articles about which one you should learn. And it seems like the consensus is that not only is React easier to learn, but also it is the newer and more updated framework and it is more in demand. So all of a sudden, we We've sort of created a path for ourselves. We want to learn this React, whatever that even means. And in order to use this React, we have to learn JavaScript and HTML. So that's where we're going to start. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to learn JavaScript and HTML. Now, I'm also going to assume that I have zero budget to work with whatsoever, and all the resources I have to learn with are uh, learn with are going to be completely free on the internet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search up JavaScript for beginners. The very first link is this three hour introduction course from freecodecamp.org. After doing a bit of research, you can see that freecodecamp.org, not only do they have a ton of free YouTube videos, but they have other interactive actual programs and courses on their website that are 100% free. And if you go to the description of this video, uh, you can see that they have pretty much a basic JavaScript course and another JavaScript course. So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm pretty much going to be, um, you know, learning from this video, maybe I might do an hour of this video a day trying to follow along, trying to really learn um, and rack my brain about things. And then I'm also going to practice on the uh, introduction to JavaScript course that is completely free on their website uh, that they link. Now, as a side note, how you go about this is a lot more about how you actually learn and how you optimize your learning as opposed to how many hours you put in. So I wanted to share with you guys something that I've used um, that I found extremely, extremely insightful. And this is a guy named Andrew Huberman. He is a neurobiologist at the University of Stanford. He's a professor there. Um, and this guy knows all about neuroplasticity and how to optimize, you know, your study habits and your, um, you know, uh, when you're trying to learn something, how to optimize that process uh, based on scientific facts and, and his scientific research and stuff like that. So, you know, how you should split your day up if you want to learn, how many hours you should spend, um, what you should be focusing on. And this podcast in particular, he has a whole podcast, but this episode number seven, where he talks about how to use failures um, uh, to actually learn fast and how to optimize a study schedule if you want to learn something, I found to be amazing. And it's an hour and 28 minutes, but I think the hour and 28 minutes that you spend watching this before you actually start um, or while you are starting and stuff like that, maybe if you only watch like 20 minutes a day, will drastically save you time down the line because it will help optimize your learning 
to learn as fast as possible. So once again, this is going to be in the description below. I absolutely love this podcast. But yeah, so I'm going to start learning JavaScript using the techniques that I learned from Andrew Huberman. Um, and I'm pretty much going to spend maybe the first one to two weeks going over this course, um, going over this video over and over again, because I'm not going to expect to understand it the first time I go about it. If this is completely new to me, it'll probably take a couple of tries before things really set in and really understand. So I can expect to maybe spend a couple weeks uh, learning JavaScript and the basics of JavaScript. Maybe I might go through his video and understand it. And this initial course, I might find other JavaScript videos as well, um, just to supplement my learning and get a different perspective on it and find other free courses online. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to start learning HTML and CSS. Of course, freecodecamp.org has an 11 hour free course on learning HTML and CSS. Now, 11 hours sounds like a lot, but if you do even two hours a day of just learning HTML and CSS, which in the grand scheme of things, to go from nothing to making $100,000 or more a year is an insane, uh, you know, return uh, of your time investment. Um, you can get through this, you know, two hours a day uh, in a single week, pretty much. Um, and you know you might have to watch it over maybe once or twice but even two weeks to get all the basics of html and css and even if it takes another month to learn the basics of javascript and html that is a month and a half to learn something that you are pretty close already with landing a job that could pay you a lot of money a lot more than the average salary might be in uh, whatever even the us or canada um so already the sort of return on investment for coding is um really good so once let's say it's been two months I finally got the basics of JavaScript. I finally have the basics of HTML. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another course on free code camp to actually learn how these two interact with each other. Um, so you can see that they have a bunch of, uh, you know, follow up courses, but remember we are interested in whatever front end development is. So we're gonna take this 300 hours course on front end development. Now this in itself might take, you know, two to three months to actually do. Now the focus here is we want to actually focus on the things that are going to give us the most return uh, for our time. So if we did research on every single one of these courses that they offer, we see that they have one on Bootstrap. We see that they have one on jQuery, SAS, React. If we actually do some research and look into one of the uh, every single one of these, we'll see that maybe we could skip the Bootstrap one uh, or, you know, we could take the Bootstrap one if you want. But we can definitely skip jQuery. This was made in 2006 and, you know, we are using a React and a simple, uh, we already found that React has a lot of demand um, and it's one of the best frameworks to learn and jQuery was definitely not one of them. Um, and we can, with a bit of Google searching, find that, you know, uh, React doesn't require any jQuery knowledge whatsoever or any SaaS knowledge or even any bootstrap knowledge. So to optimize our time, maybe you could learn, you know, bootstrap i would learn bootstrap just to learn how to style and build responsive websites and then i would move on to learning react so in or react is a really big framework there are a lot of up-to-date resources out there so in order to learn react i might for example first uh maybe go and filter it to like maybe this year i would type in learn react on youtube and filter it to courses this year and bam an 11 hour free code camp interactive react course that is absolutely amazing. I would go ahead and do that and follow along with it. That's 11 hours and you're probably going to be following along as you go. So I would expect to maybe take a, you know, maybe two weeks to a month to just get the basics of this framework down. Um, and by this point, we're probably three months into our process, starting on the fourth month uh, learning React. So I'm going to go ahead and take the next month to maybe learn the basics of this framework called React. And there's also another great series. It's a bit outdated, but another great series by yours truly about React. And um, another really important thing to do while you're learning React is make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps a lot with the algorithm and I'm almost at 30k subscribers. But anyways, there are tons of different um, uh, uh, videos out there to help you learn. And that's also one of the benefits about choosing one of the most you know popular frameworks to learn is that there's always going to be tons and tons of material on how you can learn it and a lot of people you know they might learn it from a website or they might not you know use the best resources but by watching all of these videos taking all of these free courses you're spreading yourself out and you're really learning as much as you can about the framework from a bunch of different sources um, so I would take you know the next two months 
to learn all about React. And maybe for the first month, I would learn the basics, I would follow along with courses, and then after the first month, I would be ready to start my own project. And it's really easy. All you have to do is Google, you know, project ideas for React beginners. And um, you can see here, this website is a bit jarring. I don't really like uh, the colors and stuff like that, but they have a lot of amazing ideas that you can learn. And the first thing to do is like pick the most basic thing you could possibly think of, like a calculator app or a weather app or a to-do list and just build it from scratch. Break it down into small individual pieces that you can work on and then build it together. For the calculator app, I might just start with having, uh, you know, two buttons that allows the users to click on it to make numbers. And then I might expand it to having uh, 10 buttons, one for every number. And then uh, when they click it, all it does is it uh, builds a number uh, that the user can see. So pretty much I might start with just taking user input through buttons. And then I might add a button that allows people to plus. Then I might allow people, uh, you know, to enter in a second number. Then I might, um, you know, work on adding or doing whatever the operator was for those second numbers. So start incrementally. When you think about doing all of these projects at once, it can be really overwhelming. But the key to programming, there, there's two real keys to programming in my opinion. Number one is knowing how to break whatever you're doing down into small, easy chunks that you can research and accomplish. And number two is knowing how to research effectively and copy code from Stack Overflow. And you can see the basis upon which we are deciding to do all this stuff heavily depends on us being able to research the right things and knowing what to Google. That is going to be one of the biggest skills as a programmer. The thing that, that separates a novice programmer from a really good programmer is the really good programmer is really good at searching for uh, online. They are really good at Google searches. They know what keywords to type in. They know what to type in onto Google to get the answer they are looking for. And it saves them a ton of time. So that's one of the biggest skills that you have to know. And that's why I put so much focus on it in this video, because as you do more of it, you will get better at it. So. I would do maybe two to three projects. I would say maybe take a week or two for every project and try to sort of challenge yourself with every project to integrate something that you've never done before. Then after you have two or three projects under your belt, I would then try to learn how to make a resume website with that, um, you know, which is a YouTube search away. Um, you can make some cool responsive resume sites. Uh, and you can even, if you found, if you also take the time to learn how to host the applications you made. So for example, this calculator app, you can host it online. You can add all those things and links them on your resume website and make sure you have uh, you know, your GitHub profile. So I would also take maybe a week to learn how Git learned at this stage as well, just so I could commit my all my code up. Because at this stage, we know JavaScript, we know HTML, we know the basics of React. That is enough to start taking entry level React JS jobs. And when I was personally learning all of this myself years and years ago, I started taking jobs that I only marginally knew how to do. And I learned on the actual job itself, especially because I was dealing with smaller clients that needed more simpler jobs done. It didn't really matter to me whether, uh, you know, I knew how to do everything at the beginning because I knew that it was simple enough to learn. Of course, maybe I wouldn't, you know, take a job that was like a huge big contract um, that needed some complex operations done, but there are small entry level jobs that you can do and learn at at the same time. And everything we have done up until this point is to prepare us for those jobs. Finally, we get to the actual application of jobs. The site we're going to be using is Upwork. Upwork is amazing. It requires nothing to sign up. I have made, um, you know, I've taught a lot of my friends how to program um, and I have done so, uh, showed them, you know, how to actually get jobs by making a fake Upwork account, having no work experience, no, uh, you know, prior school experience. I made a completely fake account um, and I have gotten multiple full time jobs and even small jobs that have paid over $30 USD an hour on um, from a fake account just by knowing how to apply. So. When you are applying, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to search up all the technologies you're good with and look at jobs individually. So for example, we're a React developer, so I'm going to look at all the jobs in React. And you'll see that there's over like 20 React jobs being posted every single hour. So I would come back every single hour and recheck all the jobs and apply to them. Now, at this stage, whether you get the job depends more on how good you are at applying to jobs 
as opposed to how good you are as an actual developer. So what I would recommend is create a fake client account on Upwork, um, you know, a fake account that is looking to hire developers and create a React job posting. Say that you're looking for a React developer that is great with JavaScript, HTML, and you know, maybe copy one of the things you see here and look at the people that apply. Look at what works, what doesn't. What type of applications stand out to you? Put yourself in the you know person that's hiring shoes. Um, you'll see quickly that the people that copy and paste big blocks of text going over their years and years of experience are the ones that you actually don't want to hire because they're copying and pasting that to everyone. Um, but you'll quickly see that you know if you talk about needing to make a website that can you know uh, maybe a portfolio website or something, um, the people that actually talk towards being able to do your portfolio app as opposed to copy and paste giant things that talk about their 10 years of experience stand out a lot more even though their application is shorter and more concise. And you'll learn that the shorter your application is and the more concise and the more visceral and the more targeted it is towards the actual job, the higher the chance you have at getting an actual uh, job itself through this. So um, it might take a couple of weeks before you finally get your first job, but your first job definitely won't be at $100,000 a year. It might be, you know, maybe a two month job that, um, you know, is $25 USD an hour, which equates to around 50 grand a year if you were to take that. And that's still a really good start because by doing that, you learn how to interact with clients. You learn how to actually do the job. You gain a lot more confidence. The first job is always going to feel scary. No one ever feels like they are prepared for the first program job they take but it's important that you learn to do it and you actually take the job and you learn how to do it as you go um, so after you get your first job maybe take another couple two or three jobs at around the $30 an hour mark and by that point we're around eight months into our journey we have officially you know um, steadily held jobs for around $30 an hour which is already $60,000 uh, dollars uh, a year. Um, so that's already a huge accomplishment in itself. You have four months now to get up to the point where you are making a hundred thousand dollars a year or on average around fifty thousand dollars, uh, sorry, fifty dollars an hour. Now I would say maybe around five to six fifty dollar an hour or more jobs get posted on Upwork for React every single day. So the important thing to do is make sure you are constantly working jobs at your rate um, at around thirty dollars an hour, but increase your rate to around sixty dollars an hour on Upwork when you apply to these jobs. And increasing it higher than what you actually want is important because a lot of the times they're going to try and negotiate you down. So if you're looking for a job that's fifty dollars an hour, um, you should set it at sixty dollars an hour when you apply so that you can negotiate have that room to negotiate down and over that course of four months if you have built up a bit of experience and you have experience working with clients and applying to these jobs it is almost guaranteed within four months if you have done uh if i've done everything here correctly that i will probably find a way to land a job that will last over you know six months to a year um that's over you know 40 hours a week that pays 50 dollars an hour and you are officially at the one hundred thousand dollars a year job now it's important to note that there are a lot of things that you miss out by doing this you have no leak code experience or data structures and algorithms experience at all which means if you ever go to a traditional job interview you're probably gonna bomb um, and that's why learning uh going on upwork is so important because a lot of the times when you're hi being hired on upwork they don't care about asking you random leak code questions or anything like that. They're interested on whether or not you have um, some experience and whether or not you're confident that you can get the job done and get whatever they need to done. Another thing that's important to note is that I found that the lower paying jobs are a lot more nightmarish than the higher paying jobs. A lot of times the lower paying jobs are by people that are just trying to get really cheap development done uh, and really high, a lot of development done very cheaply. Um, they don't know the value of an actual good developer and stuff like that. So they will char, they will pay you a little and overwork you a lot and have really, you know, outlandish demands because they just don't understand how technology works um, <clears throat> and what really goes into building things. So just know that if you get like a $20 an hour job and it's an absolute nightmare, it actually, you know, uh, like, opposite of what normally people think in my experience almost 99 percent of the time the more they are paying you the better the conditions are and the more they actually value your time and value your input on what is possible to do and what is not but like i said you are cutting a lot of corners by doing this the goal was to just get really good at one very specific thing and start working as fast as possible as you can of course as you start the work your breath as a programmer will increase as well you'll learn a lot more things that you might not have known by going through this whole process 
But like I said, the point was to start with one thing, get really good and a small amount of time at that one thing and get paid a lot of money for that one thing. And that is pretty much it. If you have any other ideas on cool videos like this, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.